Yeah, man, this series is awesome. I've only seen four episodes because that's all they gave us, but I can't wait right. to see the rest. But Stu, what was it about this character that made you want to commit to this mini series, James? Good question. Well, there's many reasons I wanted to do the series. I mean, it, it, Stephen King, I haven't done a King project. I'm a gigantic fan and have been since I was young. Um, I think this is, you know, one of his masterpieces, um, top three for me. So, and then you see the cast, you see Whoopi and Alexander and, and, and everybody. It's just, you know, tremendous thing to be a part of. But I think what drew me to Stu is, you know, it, I'd be lying to you if I didn't draw any sort of comparisons to the way I grew up. I grew up in, in, in Oklahoma and, um, you know, small little Midwest area. Um, and, uh, you know, there was, a, there was a simplicity to the lifestyle. And, um, you know, I think Stu represents this sort of ordinary man um, thrust into extraordinary circumstances. Welcome to the Boulder Free Zone. Stu Redman. Which one of you is Larry Underwood? How do you know who I am? How do you think? Mother Abigail? All I know is that we dreamed of her and she was real. She brought us all together to keep us safe in these uncertain times. And he's a guy with a, a really strong moral code and, and, you know, really wants to be defined as somebody who's virtuous and, and a good man, whether he's flashy or not, because he's not. Um, um, but those are the kind of heroes that I'm drawn to, uh, the ones, the, the reluctant ones that are just, they don't view themselves as heroes, they view themselves as somebody who's just doing the right thing. Yeah. Uh, and I think he's got good, you know, he's got uh, a good rigid sense of morals and, and a strong black and white sense of what's right and wrong. And, um, and I think that's, that kind of makes him a natural leader when he gets to Boulder. Yeah, well you said a heroes. Now you played your fair share of heroes and some villains along the way in your career. So I gotta ask you like, who do you enjoy playing most? The good guy, the bad guy? What do you have more fun doing? Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're if you're defining it as fun, I'd probably say the bad guys, maybe. It's nice to be a little reckless, at least when it comes to playing. Yeah, it's like you gotta fun. remind people that you can, you know, that you at least can understand the dark side of some people and uh, the dark side of humanity and that that can be intoxicating and and uh um fun to play uh yeah. you know on on the first season of dead to me it was a blast i mean i was just you know i, I like taking my villains and portraying them in a way that you actually kind of poking fun at them um yeah. <laughs> you know those kinds of people uh but it's you know it's a lot of it's a lot of fun to to, to let yourself go and and uh, kind of explore the dark corners of your mind with the uh, with the villains. Without a doubt, I feel like everything I've watched in pandemic from Westworld, Dead to Me, and now this, I'm like James James Marsden. Jimmy's everywhere, <laughs> so I can't get away from you, and that's okay. But that's it, true, yeah. man. It's like you get to turn the TV on. It's I feel very grateful for that. But uh, yeah, you just go to cable, and I'm you know. It's like a greatest hits. Uh, so <laughs> I hope it doesn't make people. I hope you didn't get sick of me. Hope you're watching some other things other than my stuff. Honey, it's a good problem to have. That is for sure. Now, speaking of problems, we got a whole heck of a lot of problems here in 2020, especially with this pandemic. How in the world does Stephen King predict some of the crises that we are facing right now this year? Considering he wrote this book, The Stand, back in 1978. Like, say, what? What did he know that we didn't? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a great question. I mean, we only decided to pay attention to it until, you know, now, just now with the, with the, with the world shutting down and going through what it's going through. Um, but look, I mean, the guy's brilliant. I think the word genius gets throw, thrown around too casually nowadays, but he, he, he genuinely is one. And um, he has a real curiosity about humanity and about where we're going and, 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 and exploring those, those, the, the, those things that scare us that we're out that we don't the, the mysteries of where we're going on this earth and and what could what could stop us what could end it all and um i think he probably found himself exploring those those ideas back in the 70s and you know it's gonna be it'll be a, it'll not with a bang but with a whisper you know i think it's it's probably something that resonated in his head i sure would love to ask him what's coming next 